All right. Well, welcome, everybody. We might have a few more people trickling in, but I'm with the University of Nebraska State Museum, and welcome to Investigate Saturday. Investigate Saturday is um, a, an opportunity for us to share science with all of you. And I know some of you have been, whoops, just a minute, I need to stop the share, and there we go, whoops. Um, Museum M, you're dominating the screen, and we need museum reservations to come on. So that's Jen, I think. Nope, Cindy, you are good. You're our main presenter right now. Your video. Oh, and you amazing. can see me? Yep, and for everybody watching, if, um, if you want Cindy, our geologist in the green shirt here, to be the main thing that you see on your screen, if you go to her video, and hover over it with your mouse in the upper right hand corner, you'll see three little dots. If you click on those, you'll see something that says pin video and you can just go ahead and pin her video so she stays big. Okay. Oh, and a couple other things while we're talking about some of the logistics. Um, we're gonna, we've got you all muted and, and if you don't, if you're not muted, then that will kind of disrupt the, um, the flow of the activities. So make sure the microphone down on the lower left has a red slash through it. And on the bottom part of the bar of your window screen, there are, um, there's a button that says chat. So if you know an answer to a question that I ask, go ahead and put it in the chat box or shout it out if you want. Um, and M Miss Molly is going to be monitoring the chat. She's in a different location. And she's going to be monitoring the chat and will um, will answer questions or throw me questions that you've asked. Um, so we sh or the answers that you give us. So we should be good that way. So Saturday investigates a time where the museum always shares some science with you, some science about natural history, and we have a hands-on activities. And we miss seeing you guys in the museum, so we wanted to do this with you live this way. So hopefully you're going to be able to do some of the activities with us, but you don't have to do them with us this morning. We will have on our website the um, activities listed there and all the ingredients and the steps you need to do these activities. Today's topic, the amazing earth. Amazing earth. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool things about the earth. And um, we are going to look at a number of these different things. And I should tell you, first of all, I don't know if I introduced myself. My name is Miss Cindy, and I am a geologist. A geologist. So, ologist means to study, somebody who studies something, and geo means earth. So, I get to talk to you about our amazing earth. So um, the first one we're going to do, let me share another screen with you. Um, the first one we're going to do, oh, no, I don't think I'll share it. We'll share that one later. If you've got some of your ingredients, some of your materials that you need, we are going to do planet apple first. So planet apple. You know, one thing we know about our Earth is it's round, round like a ball, right? Or round like an apple. So geologists are trying to understand what's inside the earth. What do you think's inside the earth? Put it in your chat box. Do you think it's solid? Do you think it's hollow? Do you think it's melted? What do you think's inside the earth? Go ahead and shout it out or put it in your chat box. Oh, we're getting some answers there. Oh, I see melted. Um, solid, oh, lava. Maybe you can read them, Miss Molly, because it's too far away for me to read them. <laughs> Layers, melted, magma, lava, a core. So we have some good guesses there. Excellent. Okay, well, so what geologists do to try to understand um, what is going on inside the earth, of course, they've got lots of instruments and they do a lot of studying. I'm going to use this apple sort of as a model because maybe this will help us understand a little bit more about our Earth. So like I said, the Earth is round and we know that because we have satellites going around the Earth and we can see from the satellite pictures that we're round. So we're going to take an apple 
and we're going to slice the apple in half because yeah, we can't slice the earth in half. That would be pretty bad. But let's go ahead and slice our apple very carefully slicing down. Now I'm just going to do one slice right now. You could slice it this way too, but I think we'll be able to see pretty easily. All right, so I'm going to show you the inside of my apple. How does that look, Molly? Can you see it pretty well or do I need to get it closer? Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so you can see there's a thin skin all the way around the apple, the whole outer part, the peel of the apple or the skin of the apple, okay? You know, the earth has a thin skin too. It's called a cr the crust. It's pretty thin. Okay, now if you look at the center of the apple, you'll see some seeds. And around the seeds is a part that's a little bit harder. You know, it's the core of the apple and we don't usually eat that part because it's kind of hard, not as tasty. The earth has a core as well. And the apple has a core that's kind of got two parts and the earth has a core that's got two parts. It's got the outer core and the inner core. Okay, now look at all this white stuff, the good part of the apple, the flesh or the pulp. Well, the earth has a thick layer like that too. Let me show you a picture of those layers of the earth. See if I can pull that up here. All right. And, oh, I forgot to mention this. This is our website and you can go along, you can follow along with us today. You can go to our education homepage at the museum website and follow along, act, do the activities there. We'll have this video up next week. And there's our email if you need to ask us any questions. There's our email. Okay, these are the ingredients we need. And look, there's the core of the earth. So you can see there's a dark gray rind around there and the crust. Okay, here's the crust and the crust, which is the same thing as the peel. And then the orange and the yellow, that's the mantle. That's the thick flesh part of the apple. And look at this core, the thicker core, the dark gray and the light gray form the core of the apple. Okay, so we've got those different parts. Let's talk a little bit more about each of those parts. So the crust, the crust is thin. It's really thin, just like the apple peel. It's only about oh, three to 40 miles thick. Now, 40 miles seems pretty thick, but on the scope of things, it's really not. And there's two different places where there's crust. I mean, the crust goes all around the earth, but in some places it's really thin, like on the ocean floor. It's only three to six miles thick by the ocean. But on the continents where we live on the continents, it can be up to 40 miles thick. So the continents are definitely thicker than the ocean floor. And humans, you might wanna know how far we've drilled into that crust. In Russia, they've drilled a hole. The deepest hole on earth goes down seven and a half miles. That's pretty far, seven and a half miles. But why go through the thick continental crust? Why don't you go through the, the oceanic crust? Well, they've tried to do that too and they've made it down about two, two and a half miles. Now, they've had to stop drilling because it gets hotter the deeper you go and things started getting warped and bent and they couldn't drill any further. So in the future, they might be able to, but right now they can't. So that's the crust and the crust, oh, what it's made of, it's made of three types of rock. Huh. I wonder if you some older kids might know what those three rock types might be. If you think you know, go ahead and put them in the chat box. There's three main groups of rocks and that's what all of the crust is made up of. So one of the types is igneous. And another one, ooh, I see some answers there. Yeah, good job guys. Good, sedimentary, metamorphic. Those are the three basic types of rocks. You guys are rocking. Excellent job. Okay, so that's the crust. Let's go down to the mantle.
Now remember, the mantle's really thick. It's 1,800 miles. That's 1,800 miles thick. That's really thick. But it's divided into two parts, okay? The upper mantle and the lower mantle. But both mantles are made of the same thing. They're made of iron, mostly iron and magnesium, okay? So what's the difference? Why have two different parts? Because they operate differently. They're, they're made of the same thing, but the upper part is kind of plastic. They use that word, plastic. Now, plastic is not like your Lego toys or anything like that. This, in science, this word plastic means something different. It means that it can flow. It can move with some pressure or deformation. Sort of like, if anybody's got any silly putty, sort of like silly putty. So it can move very slowly. It doesn't move very fast at all. It moves very slowly, but it can move. That's the upper mantle. The lower mantle, no, it's pretty solid. It's not going to be moving, not like the silly putty does. Okay, and it's really thick, mostly um, 1,800 miles thick, 1,800 miles. Now, the core, let's get to that apple core. Remember, it's two parts, and the core of the earth has two parts too, an outer core and an inner core. Once again, they're made of the same thing, iron and nickel, two really heavy elements, iron, iron and nickel. Okay, but the difference between the outer and the inner core is the outer core is liquid, and the inner core is solid. Now, you might want to know, how on earth do they know it's liquid? Who's gone down there? Well, they know because they've got all these different instruments. Geologists have all kinds of instruments, and when they study earthquakes, they notice some unusual things. So when an earth, the earth quakes and the earth shakes, it sends waves through the earth, just like waves on an ocean, but it goes through the earth. But they notice that after all these earthquakes, they can see those waves on their instruments, but something happens at a certain point. It happened all the time after all these different earthquakes and they realized something is different there. What could it be? And after doing some experiments, they realized it had to be liquid that was causing it. So the outer core is liquid and the inner core is solid. Now, one thing is that the core of the apple, it's fairly small compared to the main apple, but the core of the earth is a little bit bigger than the mantle. So they're about equal in size because the core is about 2,000 miles thick. So we've got the three parts of the apple, the peel, the skin, the flesh, and the core. And let me bring up that model of the earth again, and we'll take a look at the, here we go. Okay, so we've got the, the um, core, which is at the center, and we've got the mantle, which is off um, the orange and the yellow, and then that crust. And the crust is really thin compared to the rest of us, the rest of the Earth. So that is our planet apple. And next time you cut into an apple, think about the different layers of the earth. Oh, I forgot to ask you this question. What are some differences between the apple and the earth? Type into the chat some differences between the apple and the earth. Oh, you get to eat it. Oh, that's true, you do. But you know, I'm not gonna eat this one right now. I'd have to wash my hands first. The earth is bigger. Oh, no yeah, good. <laughs> excellent, excellent. It's not a rock. It has different elements. Oh, yes. Very good. Apples are smaller. Uh-huh. The apple's soft. Yes. Yeah, we could cut it with a knife, and there's not many rocks you can cut with a knife. <laughs> oh, you guys are really thinking. Excellent job. Okay, so... We've talked about the earth, and we've talked about um, the different parts of the earth. And we had some of you that knew there are three main types of rocks. So we are going to think about 
those rocks next. Let me move my apple out of the way here. And we're going to pull up a, oh, well, let me first tell you, you guys came up with them, igneous. Let's think about igneous rocks. They start out melted and then they cool down. They can cool inside the earth or they can cool on the surface of the earth at a volcano. Now, Nebraska, we do not have any volcanic rocks. We do have volcanic ash, but no volcanoes. And we have a little igneous rock that's formed deep inside the earth. That's way down deep in Nebraska. The next type of rock, metamorphic. Uh, we don't have any of those in Nebraska either. But metamorphic rocks form with heat and pressure. They change, but they don't melt. But the type of rock I like to share with you and my favorite are sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks, that's a pretty big word, sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are made up of sediments. So what's a sediment? Anybody know what a sediment is? Put it into that chat box. I'm just getting myself prepared here to show you the next thing. Particles, excellent. Layers, oh, we'll see those in sedimentary rocks, that's for sure. Pieces. Pieces, good. Something okay, different. you guys are on top of it. Sediments are bits and pieces of rock that have broken down. So, you know, you think about a mountain and then there's boulders on the mountain, but after a while the boulders break down into cobbles and the cobbles break down into gravel. Can you see the gravel here? Into gravel. And then the gravel will break down into sand, which is smaller than gravel. And the sand will break down into even tinier pieces. The scientists call it silt. Some people might just call it mud, but they call it silt. And you know what? You can get even smaller. You can get it so small that you can't see the pieces unless you use a microscope. And that's called clay. Raise your hand if you've played with clay before. Yeah, yeah, okay, excellent. Clay, it's just tiny pieces of sediment. Okay, so I have all these different sediments and somebody mentioned layers. You can see the layers that these sediments form. Now, this is sort of a tube that is kind of modeling, maybe like a lake. There's the stuff at the bottom of the river or the lake, and then you've got the water. But sediments are moved by both wind and water. And so we're gonna focus on water because I've got this nice little tube here. And um, what do you think is uh, gonna happen if we have a fast moving river? that is carrying sediment, and that sediment slows down, what will happen first? So if I turn this tube upside down and shake it, what do you think is gonna fall to the bottom first? Put it into the chat box. If you think sand, gravel, or silt. <laughs> sand, gravel, or silt. I gotta get a drink of water here, I'm talking too much. All right, so we have some guesses of gravel, some guesses of silt. Okay, let's test this out. I'm gonna make this a fast moving river and I'm gonna try to make sure you can see it. You'll get to see it when I'm done shaking for sure. I'm gonna pull it back here. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna turn it upside down and gonna make a fast moving river. Up and down, up and down, fast moving river. Okay. What fell to the bottom first? Gravel. Can you see those big pieces of gravel? The sand is coming next. And then the silt is coming. So slowly, 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 the silt will come down. Okay, so that's a settling tube. Now, this of course isn't a rock. How are you gonna make it into a rock? Well, you got these layers. The layers get buried underground. And as they get buried, more stuff on top kind of pushes it together, kind of compacts it a bit. But that's not enough to make a rock. So 
you got to have some water with minerals in the water. And that's easy because there's water underground everywhere you go. So once this stuff gets buried, then you've got the water in amongst all these grains. The minerals come out of the grains and glue each piece of sediment together. That's what forms a sedimentary rock. Now, it takes a long time. We're talking thousands of years to make a rock. But that's how you get a sedimentary rock. And you guys were all on top of it. Layers. That's what you notice most in sedimentary rocks. OK, now. Cindy, we're getting a good question here. So, um, there's someone who wants to know, what kind of minerals do you need to make a sedimentary rock? Aha, that is a good question. So a lot of times in the groundwater, there's a lot of different minerals, but the one that often helps form two that help form a rock. Calcium and silica are often dissolved in the water and those will come out and, and glue the grains together. There can be others, but those are the two most common. Wow, what a good question. Great question. If you've got questions, do fire them. Miss Molly will get them to me. And she might be able to answer them herself too. She's got a geology background as well. All right, now. My settling tube is fun, and I thought it might be kind of fun for you guys to make your own settling tube. So you're going to need some ingredients. If you've got them together, you can do it with me. If not, you can do it later and just watch. You might want to take notes, remember some different things, so that you can do this on your own at home. Okay? So I've got my ingredients, the things I need for this. So first of all, Got to have a jar. Now it can be a glass jar, plastic jar, but very important, you have to have a jar with a lid. Okay, it won't work if you don't, and it needs to be a tight fitting lid or you could have a mess. Okay, so we need a jar. Then you need some sand and gravel, dirt, mud, you know, just going outside and getting some of this. Um, I have some here that I've already collected. Oh, and I decided I wanted to try. <clears throat> some wood chips. What would happen if I put wood chips in? So I've got some wood chips in a plastic bag here. Some of them are a little bit bigger, some are smaller. And I decided I wanted to see what it would happen if I had leaves and grass as well. You know, you need a variety of things to make this more interesting. And um, so just going outside and collecting some things, oh, and very important, you need some water, okay? So these are the things that you would need um, and if you're going to do it with me, you can do it right along, or you can do this later um, this afternoon after you've had a chance to collect your materials. So remember, we're going to start first with a jar, and then we need to have some sand or gravel. That's really good if you can have some sand or gravel or some mud. That would be really good. And then what other things you might find outside? wood chips or little tiny pieces of sticks. You don't want to get anything too big. You know, you got to fit it into your jar. And leaves, plant material. Those are the things I kind of came up with. And I went with green ones rather than there's one brown leaf in here. So in order to do this, um, we've got all our ingredients. I think I'm going to try putting in my wood first, my little wood chips first. And we're going to go just I'm going to dump all of them in. And then I think I'm going to put in my sand and gravel is already mixed up. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and put in some sand and gravel. Oh boy, this is taking more than I thought, but oh, that's okay. All right, we'll put some of that in. I'm going to set it aside so I don't spill it. All right, and then we've got some grass and leaves. I'm gonna put that in. Now, if you wanted to make it more rock-like, what you could do is put in Epsom salts. And that's in the activity on the webpage. Epsom salts will help make it um, uh, more rock-like when you're done. And so I don't have any Epsom salts, but I could put that in right now. And let's see, how does that look? I think I'm going to add a little bit more sand and gravel to this. I think, you know, getting it a little bit fuller. Don't want it too full because we got to add water yet. Okay, 
We're going to try that, see how that works. How would Epsom salts make it more like a rock? Okay. Remember the question that um, asked about what minerals would come out of the water with calcium being one and silica being the other. Epsom salts is salt is an evaporite and that is something that will dissolve easily in water, but then it does much faster than in nature. It will glue each of those grains together. Now it's not going to be quite as strong as silica or calcium, but that's how it would work. You would dissolve the Epsom salt when you pour the water in, which I'm going to do right now, and um, that Epsom salt will dissolve. And I want to make sure I leave some space at the top here. Okay, so now it's kind of percolating down. The water's going down slowly. I can see little air bubbles coming up because the water's pushing the air out as it soaks down into the water or into the sand. Oh, there's still some dry sand down there. I might put just a little bit more. You want to leave about two inches of, of glass at the top that's open with air. Okay, two inches. So if the Epsom salt were in here, it would dissolve where none of this other stuff is going to dissolve. And so then that dissolves into the water. And then when you shake it up, okay, I'm getting my lid tight. Okay, the next thing, once your lid's tight, you're going to start shaking. So shaking back and forth, up and down, get it all over. And if you got Epsom salt, you really want to shake because you want that salt to dissolve and shaking it all up. Oh, what do you think is going to fall to the bottom first? Put it in. Now I've got different ingredients. I've got sand. I've got gravel. I've got some silt. I've got leaves and I've got wood chips. Okay, tell me what you think. All right, we have some folks guessing gravel. Okay, good, good. We have wood chips guess. Okay. Excellent, excellent. All right, I'm shaking it, I'm shaking it. Do you think anything will float? I don't know, I've never done it. If you think something will float, tell me what it is. We have some guesses, no, silt will float, leaves will float. Okay, let's see. All right, shake, shake, shake. Now I'm gonna stop shaking and whoo. Oh, let me get it closer. I'm trying not to shake too much. Can you see it, Molly? How's it looking? Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Well, I've certainly got a lot of sand at the bottom. I can't see, the gravel pieces are not real big. Maybe I should have found bigger pieces of gravel. Oh, look at that muddy water. Look what's floating on top. Wood chips are floating. I am not seeing my plant material any. Oh, there's a little bit of plant material at the top. I wonder if the plant material is in amongst the sand, if it got caught up in there. Whoa, and if I had Epsom salts in here, then I might be able to fossilize my plants. Well, I couldn't really fossilize them. It takes a long time for that to happen. But this is something you could do. And you know what? We don't have time here. Maybe if I remember, we can come back and look what's happened. Did the wood settle down or does it stay floating at the top? Does this brown water become clear? And does that muddy silt that's in the water settle down on top of that? I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside and uh, if you were doing this and it tells you this in the directions and you used Epsom salt, you'd let it sit overnight and then slowly, carefully pour the water out. And then you'd have to let it set and dry, really dry for a number of days before the Epsom salt would, before the whole thing could form a, a rock because you gotta get it all dried out. All right. Well, you guys came up with some great answers, but we're gonna keep moving on. So here is a sedimentary rock. And sedimentary rocks are one of the th three types, main types of rock that form in the crust of the earth. Okay, so we've talked about the sediments and we've got talked about layers and you can kind of see the layers here. And um, I would like to do something else with you.
another activity, which is making sedimentary layers in a different way. We just call it a sedimentary sandwich. So let me move my ingredients here out of the way and I will pull up some other things for our sedimentary sandwich. Okay, sedimentary sandwich. Um, all right, I got a lot of stuff here for a sedimentary sandwich. Okay, remember, we've got those layers and sediments have gravel and sand, um, silt and clay, and they, they can be bigger. You can have cobbles too, things that water can move along or wind. Wind's not gonna move the gravel, but you know, it can move this other stuff. So to make our sandwich, we're gonna need, make our sedimentary layers, we're gonna need some things. We're gonna need three slices of bread, preferably different colors, like a dark brown, a white, and a brown. Okay, so I've got that. We're gonna need some raisins. Um, we're gonna need some raspberry jam, any jam, any kind of jam, honey might do. Won't be able to see it as easily. I tried that, won't be able to see it as easily. Um, peanut butter or another kind of spread, especially if you got chunky because you know that could be some chunky bits of rock. And then um, if you have animal crackers, you could use those and we might fossilize an animal. But um, I didn't have animal crackers, but I have something that kind of reminded me of snakes. Okay, so, oh, and you need a plate, all right, and a spreading knife. So starting with our plate and then our knife. Um, oh, and the raisins, I mentioned the raisins and the bread. Oh, and of course, key ingredient, spread and some kind of jam. All right, so I'm gonna tell you a story because all sedimentary rocks, actually all rocks can tell us a story. They tell us the story of the history of our earth. So we're going to create a story and it's gonna be pretty similar to a part of Nebraska's history based on the rocks, okay? So um, I'm gonna tell the story as we go along. So if you're ready, we are going to start now. You have to start with the plate because that's really important for one, we don't make a mess, but more important, all of the continents on earth have what they call basement rock. That's igneous rock that is really old and it's all over the continent. Okay, so we're gonna start way back, long time ago, and we've got our basement rock and that's my plate. That's igneous rock that's very old. All right, now we're going to imagine that there's rivers flowing over this basement rock. Rivers flowing over the basement rock. We've got a river and that river is carrying sediment. In particular, it's carrying white sand. Now, where's that white sand coming from? Well, there's some mountains off over here and they're eroding. Those mountains are breaking down into smaller and smaller pieces. And that white sand is being carried by the river. And, you know, if the river slows down a little bit, sometimes the sand falls to the bottom of the river, just like we saw in our settling tube, where different things fell out as the water slowed down. Okay, so we've got sand coming across our basement rock. and after a long time, it gets really thick, really thick. And after a longer time, it becomes hard and a rock. So I'm gonna start with a white piece of bread. And this is my white sandstone, okay? So I'm gonna put it down on top of the basement rock. Remember the rivers were carrying that sand across. And so I've got my white sandstone. All right, so that's happening for a long, long time. But one point there's a flood, huge mega flood. You know, we had one in Nebraska, Northern Nebraska last spring. This one is carrying all kinds of stuff because it's closer to the mountains and it's going to carry um, gravel and sand and mud and it's gonna carry it along 
and we are going to spread some peanut butter, chunky peanut butter, and that's going to represent the flood. Okay, so I'm spreading my chunky peanut butter onto my sandwich, and I'm just going to make sure I get it all over here. Yeah, because I like lots of peanut butter. And as long as it's not real, I might eat this later after I wash my hands. Okay, so now I've got the flood deposits on top of my sandstone. And oh, you know what I want to do? There were some boulders. I mean, this was a mega flood. There were some boulders. So I'm going to put some raisins in to represent boulders. There's a boulder. There's a boulder. We're going to get some boulders in here. Yeah, spread them all around. Yeah, because that water was really fast moving. It was fast moving. Now, it's rolling the boulders along. I've gotten to hear that in a flood where the boulders are being rolled and it's, it's really, you can hear those boulders coming along. It was pretty scary. All right, but the flood ends and things kind of go back to normal. But, you know, the rivers is much slower now. And it's not carrying sand anymore. It's more like the rivers in Nebraska where it's carrying mostly mud, that muddy water. And, and when it really slows down, then we get some mud forming on top here. And after a long period of time, you're talking thousands if not millions of years, you get a layer of mud and that forms a shale, a rock called shale or mud rock, mud rock. And I tried to find a piece of dark bread, but I was not able to find the dark bread, but I did find one that had some dark in it. So I'm going to put that on top. That represents my shale. Okay, so now I've got the sandstone. Then I've got the conglomerate with the peanut butter chunks and the raisin boulders. And now I've got the shale, the mud rock. Okay, so in our story here, We've got this lazy river going along, dropping the mud, okay? But things are happening around the world. On the polar um, ice caps, the polar ice caps and all the glaciers, they've started to melt. This is just in the world a long time ago. They started to melt. And what happened when they melted, that meant the ice and the water that was on the land is now in the water, in the oceans, in the seas. And when it melts, then the sea level starts to rise. So our land here is going to get covered with seawater because the ocean sea levels start to rise and it comes across and floods our land. Now, I'm really not going to put water here, but we are going to put the rocks that it would form because in the seawater, of course, they're living creatures little tiny creatures, shells, animals that float in the water, and um, they're, they're invertebrates, they're animals without a backbone, and seashells, all these animals that live in the water, they eventually die. I mean, all animals die. They fall to the bottom of the sea, and the seas go on. I mean, we're talking millions of years here. The seas go on, and eventually there's this thick pile of animal shells, and this thick pile of animal shells forms something called a limestone. And we definitely have limestone in Nebraska. Actually, we have all of this in Nebraska. In a few minutes, I will show you what some of these things look like. But let me get my next layer. It's going to be the jam. The jam is the limestone. So I'm going to put the jam on top of my sandwich. And, you know, it's filled, oh, there's great, this, this jam has little seeds in it, which is really good because the seeds are the tiny shells of animals that lived in the sea. And, you know, I think this is a good place where I am going to put, cover this up here so I don't spill it. I'm going to put, I don't have an animal cracker, but you know what? If you've got an animal cracker, uh, an animal that lived on land, it could be that, you know, a, a flood carried or the animal was in the river and it was carried into the sea. And this is my snake. And my snake ended up getting into the sea, dying and falling to the bottom of the sea. And it'll become fossilized. 
Okay, so after a while, millions of years, the sea starts to recede. Maybe the land's rising a little bit. Maybe there's more ice forming in the poles and the glaciers. And as a result, um, the seas start to go down and we're not a sea anymore, we are land again. And it's back to what it normally was, the, the land um, have, well, I can't say normal because at this point in time of history, we were underwater an awful lot, but normal like today. And so we've got um, rivers flowing across, but you know, off to the west of Nebraska, there are volcanoes. And um, let's see, I know there's somebody in California. It wouldn't have been as far as west as California. It would have been more like uh, Montana and Utah in that part of our state or country where we would have had um, volcanoes going on. And so those volcanoes, we wouldn't have had the lava. We were just too far away for the lava, but we would have had volcanic ash. Ash goes up into the air and it can be blown by the wind. And Nebraska actually has gotten a lot of different ash layers because it's blown from the west this way. And some of those ash layers are pretty thick. So when that ash lands on the earth, it's going to get cemented together. That means the minerals come out of the water. Once it gets buried, the minerals come out of the water and glue those pieces of ash together and they form a rock called tuff. This is my tuff. Okay. So we've got our sandwich here. Let's review the different type of sediments that we have. I'm gonna share with you a couple more things here. Um, it'll take me a minute to advance my slides. Um, oh, let me back up here. You can see these layers. Those are the layers that you guys mentioned that were in sedimentary rocks. Here's some more layers. Now the first layer was the sandstone, okay? So here is a picture. In fact, you can see the ripples preserved in the sandstones. This was a river a long time ago, and now we can see it at the surface of the earth. It tells us a story. All right, oh, look at that conglomerate. That's our next layer. The peanut butter layer was a conglomerate. That's where you get the big pieces of cobbles and the boulders and the sand and the gravel. Remember, I put my boulders in, my raisins in. Okay, and the next layer, oh, when things start slowing down, the rivers aren't moving nearly as fast. They're just carrying silt and clay, and that's going to form the, um, the shale. And then we've got limestone. Oh, I do have a picture of limestone. Look at that. Now that's a close up. All the others I was showing you were further away, but this limestone, you can see some of the fossils in it. Because limestone is made of fossils. Sometimes you can see them easily. Sometimes you'd have to use a microscope to see them. Okay, and it's mostly made of calcium. All right, and then our top layer is, um, oh, we got the fossilized, snake in there. Um, the top layer is tough, and I'm sorry I didn't have a picture of tough, um, so we'll have to do without that. But let me see what we've got here. Oops, there we go. Oh yeah, I'll show you that in just a minute. Okay, so we've got our various layers of sedimentary rocks. Now, a lot of times they're flat, and how we know what is underneath these layers is we have drilled into the earth and we've pulled out cores of the earth. Now, before we go to the cores, I want you to, now let's do the cores since I was talking about it. I put my sandwich in a refrigerator last night and I think this will work. I chilled it down. Now, to do a core, you could use a biscuit cutter this is kind of big for my sandwich. So I'm gonna try, and this may not work, I'm gonna try this small cookie cutter and do what the geologists do. They just drill into the earth. I'm drilling, I'm pushing down. Okay, now we're gonna see if I can pop out. There we go. Look, there's my core. Okay, I'm gonna get close and see if we can see some of the things in my core. So we've got the white sandstone. Oh, you can see that layer 
of um, layer of peanut butter, oh, conglomerate, conglomerate, and then we've got the brown shale. Oh, the limestone layer is a little hard to see here. It's kind of mixing in with the brown shale, and we've got the tuff. That's a core where you can see what's inside the earth. Now, let me show you a picture of the core. Here we go. And this is core that was taken um, by geologists. And we have some in the museum. And it's, they're long, some just feet and feet and feet, meters and meters and meters of this. This is core that came from southeastern Nebraska. I'm not exactly sure where, but here there's some dark stuff. That's the black shale. There's some black shale up there too. There's a lot of limestone. That means we were covered by a sea for a long time. And then we were land again. So this whole sequence of the whole sequence of alternating with the sand and the shale and the conglomerates. Now that happened. We just told one little segment of Nebraska's story. But it just kept happening over and over and over again. And we know this because of those cores. So um, yeah, you could make your own sedimentary sandwich. Now, when you look back at my sandwich here, tell me, what do you think? What's the oldest layer? The white bread on the bottom, the, which is the sandstone, or the brown bread on the top, which is the tuff. What do you think is the oldest layer? Well, Cindy, we have about one minute left for this activity. Okay, that sounds good. And I have to go get my power cord. I'll be right back. All right, and we're getting some good guesses about limestone, sandstone. The bottom is the oldest layer. Good okay, excellent, excellent. Um, the oldest layer is definitely at the bottom. And the youngest layer is at the top. And if you go to our website, you will see some other ideas and things to think about with this activity, okay? Like you could make it into a mountain. Okay, we are moving on. And we've talked about sedimentary rocks and the story in Nebraska. And now we're gonna think in terms of the sediments are made up of minerals. All rocks are made up of minerals. And the minerals, um, rocks are made up of a whole bunch of different types of minerals. And the minerals are made up of elements. And they come together and they form unique crystal shapes. You guys have probably seen crystals before. Like salt is a crystal. Sugar's a crystal, snowflakes are crystals. All those things are crystals. So we're gonna try to grow some crystals and then look at the crystals and see if we can get a better feel for minerals because minerals make up rocks. So for this next activity, we've got some things that you will need here. Let me move some of my other stuff aside so we don't get confused. And Cindy, okay. because we yes. started about five to 10 minutes late um, for everyone to trickle in, I think we can take about five minutes here on the end to do our activity so everyone can see it if you guys have time to stick around. Okay, okay. So I'll go ahead and, and we'll go through this one kind of quickly. All right, so we got our measuring cup. We've got a glass. I've got a string tied to a pencil, tied to a paper clip. And you'll see what I'm gonna use that for. And I've got some salt, I'm gonna use salt you can use both salt and sugar. I recommend you do both, okay? One at a time, of course, but I'm gonna just do the salt since we're running out of time here. And I've got a spoon for stirring and I've already boiled my water, okay? So it's important to have water that has been boiled. So I've got boiled water and we've got to dissolve our ingredients first, the salt. So I'm gonna pour the boiled water into my measuring cup. You can see it's steaming, it's hot. So you wanna make sure you have an adult that's helping you with this. And then 
I'm going to just start pouring salt in. And you could measure the salt out. Um, I think they give you some measurements in the directions online about how much you'll need. And I'm just going to slowly pour the salt in. And I'm going to keep on stirring. And I'm going to stop because we want a super saturated solution. That means we want a lot of salt dissolved in the water. And we're going to stir until it won't dissolve anymore. So I'm still looking. Oh, I can still see crystals. So I'm going to pour some more in. And it's when I can't stir it, I stir it and I can still see salt on the bottom. Then I know I'm done stirring. OK. Um, nope, still, I'm going to pour some more in. You want super saturated because you want these crystals to form. So I'm still stirring. And you can do the same thing with sugar. Actually, online in the activity, we give you some other ideas because every one of them forms different crystals. And so you could use Epsom salt. You can use alum. OK, let me see how this is coming. Yeah, I think we're there. I'm going to pour just a little bit more in. OK, let's see how that does. I can feel it a little bit when I'm stirring it. I can still, I can feel the little bit of salt crystals. OK, I think I'm good. Now, we are going to take our string. You tie the string to the, the pencil and to a paper clip. And you want to wet your string. So remember, I had some water from before. I think I'm just going to dip my string into this pitcher. I want to get the string wet because I'm going to put some salt on it. And those salt crystals on the string are going to act like seeds. They're going to give the crystals something to grow on. OK, so now I'm going to, it'd be good if I had another plate, but my tray will keep me from making too big a mess. I'm just going to salt my string. OK, now I've got a little bit of salt on my string. I've got a paper clip that'll help hold the string down. And I have the string tied to the pencil. I'm going to pour it into my glass. And because the glass is taller, it will pour, be a little bit better than the measuring cup. Oh, wow, I did pretty good guessing here. See those salt coming out? I, I got it to the point of super saturation. All right, now I'm going to put my string in. And you want your string, the pencil or the paper clip, not to hit the, not to lie flat on the bottom. You want it suspended. And I think this is pretty good. So it's there. Now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to set it off to the side. And you could check it every couple hours, but I think it's going to take a couple days. So check it tomorrow and um, check it the next day. And um, you know, once you get your crystals, especially if you do alum or Epsom salts, sugar, salt, take pictures of them. Send them to us at the email that we sent you. And I'll put that up again. Send them to us so that we can see what crystals you grew. We're thinking about taking a gallery of pictures from all the different Saturday Investigates, and we'll share what you guys came up with, because we so miss being with you, where we could see you doing these things. So this is sort of our way to kind of say, hey, we miss you. Don't forget us. Please send us pictures so we can see what you were able to accomplish. Oh, right. We've done a lot. We have thought about the Earth and the parts of the Earth. We've thought about the crust, what the rocks are that make up the crust, and then really looked at the sediments that make up sedimentary rocks and kind of told a little bit of the story of Nebraska. Just a little bit. And then looked even smaller at minerals that make up the sediments. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share the information about our web page one more time. Are there any questions, Miss Molly? We have a con Thank you for the informative rock stories. Oh, good. I hope you guys had fun. I really wish we could be with you because I so enjoy working with you. Look. The Grand Canyon. Look at the layers. That's the best place in our country to see sedimentary rocks. Hey, and they've got some igneous rocks there, too. Um, all right, here we go.
This is our website where you can get, um, go to on the education home page or the education page and home activities and all of these things we've talked about plus a couple more for today for geology, amazing earth, are there on the web page. And we've got other things there too. Check out our site. Um, and we also have, if you've got pictures, take pictures of your sandwich, take pictures of your crystals and send them to us. We would love to form a gallery of your photos. Thanks everybody.